even the most rational index investors might catch themselves wondering if they should sell some of their equities or delay investing new cash because of expected market volatility or reports of record high stock prices. And if the market does happen to drop, our brains will allow us to believe that we were right, which might increase the future impulse to time the market. That is called confirmation bias. It is not a good way to make financial decisions. Instead, we should look at the data on market timing to see if it is a viable strategy. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of Common Sense Investing, I'm going to tell you what the data say about market timing. Before I get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for watching and subscribing. I didn't really know what to expect when I started making these videos two years ago, but the response has been excellent and it feels like there's a great community building around the channel. One of the biggest challenges in thinking about timing the market is that there is actually data showing that when markets are expensive, future returns tend to be lower. This might make it seem obvious that if stock prices are high relative to the past, it might not be a good time to be in the market, or at least not a good time to invest new money. The most reliable metric that we have for forecasting future returns is the Schiller CAPE, or Cyclically Adjusted Price Earnings. If we look at market history, periods of high prices have often been followed by lower returns. Take a look at the annualized excess returns for stocks that have been sorted quarterly based on valuations using the Schiller CAPE. This chart is from an AQR paper titled Market Timing, Sin a Little. On the left, we can see that the bucket of the most expensive stocks has a substantially lower return than the bucket of the least expensive stocks on the right. There is clearly a relationship between current valuation and future returns. While it may seem like I'm making an argument in favor of market timing, I can assure you that I'm not. One problem here is that the data that we just saw has a meaningful hindsight bias built into it. Think about it. If we sort stocks every quarter based on their valuation relative to all of the history that we are examining, we are cheating. A real investor would not know what future valuations are going to be, which would make their valuation-based sort far less effective. Stocks may look expensive relative to history today, but relative to the future, which we cannot observe, they may look cheap. This causes an obvious problem for market timers. In the same AQR paper, they adjust for this hindsight bias by sorting stocks quarterly based on only the past 60 years of data ending each quarter. With this method, we are getting results that a real investor may actually be able to capture. The results in this case are much weaker. There is still a trend toward lower return when stocks are most expensive, but it is much less obvious than in the case of perfect foresight. Even though it's weak, there is still a relationship. When stocks are expensive relative to the past, future returns tend to be lower. The real question though, is whether or not you can use this information to make investment decisions. The AQR paper also asked this question. They built a market timing strategy that adjusted the weight in stocks based on valuations. They tested the strategy on data from 1900 through 2015. For the full sample, the timing strategy did add value to returns, but it underperformed from 1958 through 2015. The authors suggest that this may be due to stocks becoming more or less cheap for very long periods of time. In other words, from 1900 through 1957, stocks were generally cheap relative to their past, resulting in the timing strategy being more than 100% invested in stocks due to leverage for most of the time period. From 1958 through 2015, stocks were generally expensive relative to the past, resulting in the strategy being underinvested for most of the time period. The paper sums this up as follows. Valuations can drift higher or lower for years or decades, making it difficult to categorize the current market confidently as cheap or expensive without hindsight calibration, and therefore difficult to profit from such categorizations. One of the other challenges with using signals like the Schiller Cape to time the market is that even after a signal may suggest that lower returns are coming, there may still be more high returns to come. There is evidence that when stocks have been increasing in price, they tend to continue on that trajectory for some time. This is known, intuitively, as momentum. Stocks will start to look expensive based on metrics like the Schiller Cape because they've been going up in price. Selling them at that point means that you are betting against momentum, which is a well-documented phenomenon. We also have to remember that most of the market's returns come in a relatively small number of trading days. Take a look at this data for the S&P TSX Composite Index. 
From 1977 through 2018, the index returned 9.72%. If you missed the single best trading day over that full time period, the annualized return drops to 9.48%. If you missed the 15 best days, the annualized return drops to 7.44%. That's more than a 2% drop in annualized returns for missing a tiny fraction of the total trading days. Now, the probability of missing the 15 best days may not be any better than the probability of missing the worst 15 days. So this is an extreme example. But the point is that you have to stay in the market if you want to get the market's returns. I think that even for the most rational investors, the urge to market time will be the strongest when there is a lump sum of cash to invest. It's scary looking at your pile of cash and knowing that it could drop substantially the day after you invest it, especially when there is so much uncertainty in the market. Let me tell you something that I've learned after having hundreds of conversations like this. The market always feels uncertain. Feelings of uncertainty are not basis for market timing decisions. One simple trick that many people are familiar with to alleviate such concerns is dollar cost averaging. Instead of investing $100,000 today, you invest $10,000 per month over the next 10 months. This alleviates any concerns over investing at the worst possible time, but unfortunately that is all that it does. Dollar cost averaging is systematic, which is good, but at the end of the day, it is still a form of market timing. Dollar cost averaging should not, on average, give you a better result than investing your lump sum of cash right now. Vanguard studied this in a 2012 paper titled Dollar Cost Averaging Just Means Taking Risk Later. They tested lump sum investing against dollar cost averaging over 12 month periods from 1926 through 2011 in the US, 1976 through 2011 in the UK, and from 1984 through 2011 in Australia. They found, across stocks, bonds, and a 60-40 balanced portfolio, in all geographic regions tested, lump sum investing beat dollar cost averaging roughly two-thirds of the time. As we have seen, there is a relationship between current market valuations observed by the Schiller PE and expected future returns. As tempting as this seems, that relationship is not reliable enough to provide any meaningful information for investment decision making. Before anyone tells me that they would base their market timing decision on intuition as opposed to a valuation metric like the Schiller PE, let me tell you what Nobel laureate Danny Kahneman told the 71st CFA Institute annual conference. It is very difficult to imagine from the psychological analysis of what expertise is that you can develop true expertise in, say, predicting the stock market. You cannot because the world isn't sufficiently regular for people to learn rules. Market timing is hard. You have to get out at the right time, which is hard to do even with the most reliable forecasting metric that we have available, and then you have to get back in at the right time. Even if you miss the right time by a few good days in the market, you can seriously hurt your long-term returns. I haven't even talked about the trading costs and taxes incurred to jump in and out of the market, which, depending on the circumstances, could have a large negative impact on returns. John Bogle, Vanguard's legendary founder, famously said about market timing, after nearly 50 years in the business, I do not know of anybody who has done it successfully and consistently. I don't even know of anybody who knows anybody who has done it successfully and consistently. If you are sitting on cash to invest and feeling nervous, I think that dollar cost averaging, while statistically suboptimal and a form of market timing, is much better than sitting on the sidelines waiting for the perfect moment. Have you ever caught yourself timing the market? Tell me about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Felix of PWL Capital, and this is Common Sense Investing. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who you think could benefit from the information. Don't forget, if you've run out of Common Sense Investing videos to watch, you can tune in to weekly episodes of the Rational Reminder podcast wherever you get your podcasts.